The video I'm making today is a video that is probably going to get a little bit of hate, probably a lot of haters on this, um, but it's something that ties into the, what I've been talking about lately about the water retention and what might cause water retention. Now, I came across this subject a long time ago. I really didn't look into it at all. And then I came across it again, I think two weeks ago, and I decided I'm going to review this video. It kind of gets into what I've been talking about with water retention and you're probably not as fat, I guess, as you think you are. Uh, I, and I say that to myself too. And you know, if I really think about it, cause I used to cut fish and, and different, you know, animals and fat feels so much different than water weight that it's, it's very noticeable if you've got water weight on you or if you've got fat weight on you. So I wanted to make this video kind of an idea of what might be happening, especially to those of us who might have been overweight or, or chronically stressed. This might actually be happening to you. Last thing before I get started with uh, my little reaction video is I'm shooting on a lens, a Nikon lens made in 1981. It's manual focus. So if I'm not in focus here, the lens is perfect. There's nothing wrong with the lens. So your eyes are bad. Go get them checked out. This lens can do no, no wrong. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, it's, it's an old lens. I've always liked Nikon. I found a way to hook my Nikons up to uh, the uh, Sony here. So anyways, that's the lens. Uh, let's get into the video. Here we go. Here is one of many videos that talks about this. I'm going to use this one just uh, because I've watched it before. There, this woman has done a lot more on this, so uh, just go check her out, I guess. But uh, let's let's get started. Maybe there we go. Hello. Good evening. Hi. I wanted to come on this evening and answer a question that I got yesterday, where I typed out the answer, but. I don't know how much I'll be commenting on this. Um, we'll see. I kind of, I want the information out there more than anything. It wasn't really clear because it is a very complex um, issue. And the question that I got was from someone asking about unexplainable weight gain. So she's noticed that she's been. Now, here's the thing. This could have been unexplainable weight gain from early childhood like if you if you've got if you live in a you probably notice this too like if you lived in a house with multiple kids and you're the only fat one like that might be a clue to this or you know just different things gaining weight but there hasn't been any uh nutrition pro any she hasn't been eating a ton and she was curious if there was an explanation from the german new medicine perspective about why that might be that she was gaining weight and while there are a few reasons there's one that's really important to talk about and i haven't made a video about it yet so um, i wanted to talk about it tonight and it's one of dr hammer even said that this is one of his most important discoveries is this particular family of conflicts and they are the air conflicts so a i r e a is for abandonment I is isolation, R is refugee, and then E is existence. And so in German New Medicine, if you're unfamiliar, Dr. Hummer. I noticed that a lot of people who have weight issues feel like they were abandoned by somebody at some point, somebody important in their life discovered that every disease process, every symptom that we experience, everything that goes on with our bodies is the result of either an adaptation or a healing phase made after a person is in a conflict so that you something happens, something unexpected, something surprising, something that caught you off guard. Also, if you're somebody who lives in fight or flight, this is going to be for you. And in that moment, your body went into an adaptation state and that adaptation state is a primal programming. It's from ancient, ancient evolution. Um, the body has developed over time to have these defense mechanisms. So the conflict related to this unexplainable weight gain possibly is the air conflict. So like I said, abandonment. So feeling abandoned. A lot of times this will happen um, in children will get abandonment conflicts when they get taken to school for the first time. Um, I mean, if you have a divorce, all sorts of different uh, situations can have a person. And all of these conflicts are all interpreted by the individual. And so this is all an individual's perception. So something might happen to someone and they might not have an abandonment conflict, even though from the outside you would say, yeah, that, that person got abandoned, but they may not experience it that way. But, all right, here's an example for, for me actually is 
I was seven years old when my sister came around. Like it was just me. And then my sister came around. And then obviously because it's a newborn, my, the parents are going to have to spend more attention with the newborn. So I think, you know, that for the, for me, I think that's where some of this comes from. Way. On the other side of it, something could happen that you're like that. No one really abandoned you, but that person could feel abandoned. Exactly. So all that like I, I obviously was not abandoned. They still took care of me. Everything was taken care of. But yeah, it's is perceived. that person's individual experience and how they felt. And so if they felt aban abandoned, this could trigger the conflict. Um, also, isolation. So this happens a lot if a person is like in the hospital and, you know, they get left there and they're not with their family, they're not with their pack anymore. And so they feel alone, they feel isolated. That could also trigger this conflict. Um, refugee. So we've got a lot of like displaced families right now because of fires and hurricanes, actual, you know, uh, refugees. And so when you no longer have a home, you know how no longer have like your place, your family, you, you feel uh, lost and alone. And then also existence. And so an existence conflict can take place when you um, have a diagnosis, when you are faced with something that you think you might die, or you're just kind of faced, you know, you have a realization one day and you're faced with this kind of existence conflict. So what happens when you have this type of conflict? It triggers something deep within us all the way back to when water dwelling creatures were the only creatures on the planet. And so a water dwelling creature to stay alive, to continue surviving, the most dangerous thing for a water dwelling creature is to be washed up on the shore. And so it needs to be able to survive. It's kind of like a last ditch effort. Let's do everything we can to survive for when the tide comes back in. And so when the water washes us back in to our normal environment. And so the, tr the, the program that gets triggered, it's the kidney collecting tubule. And so the kidney collecting tubule, so there's several parts of the kidney. So this isn't the same for all kidney uh, dysfunctions or things that we experience as kidney disease. This is a very- If you add to this too, people who do carnivore keto, you're going to have damaged kidneys, like I, I guarantee, unless you do it for like, a, like, I don't know, like six months, probably not. But if you do it in an extended period of time, chances are you're going to have issues with your kidneys. Very particular part of the kidney, the collecting tubules. And so what happens is there's proliferation um, in the kidney uh, drainage calyx. So basically it blocks up the drain so that the body retains water. And that water retention can result in weight gain. And so, and, and it's obviously swelling. And so there's swelling, there's weight gain. You're holding on to all of this water. Think of it like a life, like a water reserve, because that's truly what your body is doing. It's holding on to all of the water that it can because it's experiencing this fish out of water conflict. It's experiencing this abandonment, existence, refugee um, conflict. And so as long as that conflict is going on, the water will be retained. And so when you think about this in the context of like people and what, uh, what people experience, I put FOMO on there because that's a form of abandonment. That's this fear. Some people, they're very triggered by fear of missing out. You know, maybe early on, you know, they had older siblings and they never got to go out and they, ne you know, so they kind of got this, um, they always had this, oh, I'm always left behind, I'm always left behind having this abandonment. And so they're very sensitive to that. Um, I also thought about like the freshman 15, like when kids go away to college, you know, we say, oh, they gain 15 pounds because they eat a bunch of crap because they're away from home and I think what it actually is is you're used to being around your family you're used to being around your pack and you get out into the world and you're kind of isolated and you don't have your your family We're you know uh, he, we're all pack animals we like to be around people that we're comfortable with and you're here out at college and you may have a bit of this kidney collecting tubule conflict in retaining water and one liter of water now I know how crazy this stuff sounds but this guy you know he, he did help a lot of people water can uh, retain up to 2.2 pounds on your body and so you got people who drink a lot of water too especially if you're trying to lose weight um, so you've got this unexplainable weight gain you don't know why you're gaining weight and people say oh drink a ton of water water will help you lose weight and then the, you're drinking a bunch of water and then your body is retaining water and what happens is it gets stored in your fat cells and so your fat cells store the water and this actually, after I watched this video, I wanted to do the experiment on myself before I actually did this video. And I did the experiment. If you haven't seen that video, maybe I'll re remember to link it somewhere. 
Um, if not, just go look at my like last five videos. It's in there. I talk about how uh, wa you know, I cut back water, and it's true. It's it's what she's talking about is true. And expand, and so that could be uh, one of the reasons that the weight gain is there. Yeah, the thing about going to college too is it could be even like very breaking away from your social group and your friends and all that. Stuff oh yeah, too, true. You know? so mm -hmm. as you go to this new place, and you know, you're. I think getting back to to the whole idea about how metaphorical this whole thing is and how the body is. I was actually thinking about this right before we started this video. Do you know how? Like, if, I don't know if you've ever had any experience interacting with someone who's a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a therapist or they're just interested in those things and then reading into things and then interpreting things. You almost have to be careful about what you say because everything that you say is a sign. Of some kind of <laughs> right, like a, yeah. You know, it's a sign that, you know, you've got some kind of weird hang up about this, that, the other thing and everything means something other than what it seems to mean. There's a sense in which the body sort of responds in that same way because the body is so hung up on survival. It's so preoccupied with what could this, ex every experience that you have is in some way or another interpreted by the body in terms of what it says about your environment, about your survival, your survival probability, about m more specifically about what's most likely to be the biggest threat to your survival over a period of time. And when you understand that, you can begin to say, okay, if if my body were to interpret this anger that I'm having because someone cut me off in traffic um, as a threat to my survival, if they were, because that's what it is, is that the reason you're having that experience is that that experience is in some way communicating to your bodily tissues. This actually could be added to by video games if you really think about it. Like if you're constantly playing video games, especially like first person uh, shooters, you might always think like you're in that conflict. And it, you know, because a lot of uh, gamers, I mean, their diets are crap, but. In, in the West, anyway, tend to be, you know, a little overweight. Um, what What's going on, right? The body's, I mean, you know, for one thing, it may be motivating you to either get ready to fight something or to flee a situation that could be dangerous. But the body is also responding to that because there's no kind of like wasted sensation. There's no wasted experience. Rest assured that the body is responding to everything about what it is like to be you. Um, and so that's a useful exercise, I think, to say, I'm feeling a little left out in the situation. And we don't typically think about our health in that. You know, if we're a little too sick to go somewhere, or I don't know, maybe we, are, you know, hurt our foot or something, and we can't take part in some kind of a family activity, we don't usually think about, okay, how's my body interpreting this, right? Because aside from the fact that, you know, you hurt your foot, you know, you're, you're not thinking about your body. You're thinking about how you want to go play. But if the body were to interpret this negative emotion that you were having, in what way would it interpret it? And it would right. interpret it in separation. And it's, it's, it's this most general, big picture kind of interpretation here. Because we're, again, we're dealing with these ancient tissues who, they're not, they're not evolved, they're not like, you know, cutting edge, they're not the brightest necessarily, because they, cause they're, they got a huge personal history. And that's the thing to understand too, is that like when you're talking to a person, if I'm talking to a client that comes from a specific background where they've had a lot of trauma, I gotta understand that everything about what they hear me say is going to be informed, everything about their perception of me and what I'm saying to them is gonna be informed by their personal history. Well, you've got like a genetic history, you've got a an evolutionary history that stretches back way back beyond, you know, anything about like what our modern kind of brains are all about. And so you've got tissues. Now, I'm not a fan of this evolutionary theory, but I, I know we do have some I guess reptilian brain uh, activity, uh, for lack of a, you know, it's it's basically called that. That have been around for that long. It's the embryological stuff is so interesting because, you, like fetuses, they look so weird, you know, because it's this original origin tissue. It's this ancient these folds and these grooves and all this different stuff, and you have to understand that that tissue has a history and its interpretation, its response to your experience, is going to be colored tremendously by that personal history. And at some point in our history as an organism, if you had separation, you know, probably in some way or another, the biggest threat to your life, I mean, even even now, contemporarily, it doesn't happen too often, but if you think about it, something bad's going to happen to you. Um, if something non-traumatic, non-violent is going to get you in trouble, it's going to be 
running out of water. It's an interesting kind of thing because of the fact that we're what, like 98% water and, and you can go a lot longer without food. I mean, you can go a tremendous amounts of time, right? like almost a month or more than a month in some mm -hmm. cases. But with water, it's only a few days. And so isn't it interesting that the body would be so sensitive in its responses to any kind of sensation you have of danger? It starts hanging on to water because it, I mean, again, ancient tissues, what's most likely to get us in trouble here? Well, we move from the ocean onto the ground. There's not water everywhere now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I, retaining. You know think what you want but i don't really buy into that whole thing and hanging on to that water and it might seem so silly i'm sad that my sister didn't invite me to her wedding shower why would i be gaining weight about that you know what i'm saying but I, think about it though it, the body's just getting separation and separation is what you're removed from everyone else you're removed from where you normally would be and how's the, how's how's this ancient embryological tissue going to interpret this it's not going to do an advanced psychoanalysis and say well the thing is you're afraid of this it's going to say <laughs> oh shit you know we better hang on to water because that's the most important thing and i was thinking about this too like air you know you need air you can you can get by without water for longer than you can get by without air but the interesting thing about air is that we consume so much oxygen in our tissues that you can't, and like just the nature of air and oxygen as a gas, you can't really like, so we don't have a big like air bladder over on our side that we can store up a lot of extra air. And so the body does what it can to hang on to it, but it just, the nature of water, the nature of the fact that like our body is sort of just, it, it just it's just fluid everywhere. They can really kind of pack in that fluid and mm -hmm. the kidneys and everything like that and actually keep more of that in the body because the air goes in your lungs. And that's pretty much it. I mean, it you know, goes through your bloodstream, but the it doesn't hang out like in your tissues for the most part, it's mostly getting used. But with water, we can actually kind of hang on to it. Sort of, not as well as the camel, but kind of like a camel, right? And well, yeah, exactly. Well, the camel in the fat hump on the back, that's where the camel stores the, the water, and that's where we store our water, too. And it's really interesting when you look at, like, families that have several children, and... Uh, you'll and only like one of them maybe it happens to be overweight and it's like okay well I wonder what what's the difference because they probably all ate the same food they all have the same genes the same parents how come one of them is overweight and the other ones are not and it could be just you know the birth order uh, yeah I mean that's that's kind of probably because my sister's not overweight at all it could be something about um, maybe that child had to go to daycare and the other ones didn't you know what i mean any one of these variables that child felt more abandoned than the other one maybe that child was treated exactly the same but they perceived the same treatment as a different thing right exactly. that could, it could be because it's it, their own sensitivity it's their own individual personality yeah and that's that's the thing too oh no what have i done there was it wasn't anything that the parents did yeah it's that the child's perception just was what it was mm -hmm. and, and they can literally they may it's possible that they were treated better than all of the other children. See, that's really interesting because if they were the ones that got preferential treatment, one wonders where that preferential treatment came from. And it probably came from the parents intuitively or perhaps consciously noticing that that child was more sensitive, maybe more inclined to feeling le being left out. And so that's really the, you know, it's that perception thing that's so significant. And so it's not even really about correcting this stuff or saying, oh, that's why the problem is there. It's about, I guess, just realizing, oh, maybe psychologically I'm inclined, maybe, maybe just you know, perceptually, I'm inclined towards perceiving being left out. I know Filter, that to be yeah. true. I, I, I know that this is so. When you know that that's true, suddenly you can assign a different meaning to the experience of FOMO. And when you assign a different meaning to it, which means you deliberately kind of go inside and say, hmm, my experience of this right now is really not that nice uh, but I know that if it's part of what it's like to be me it's coming from me and that and so probably I know that a lot of experience flows from meaning and so what am I deciding perhaps without knowing it that the, the fact that I wasn't invited to the housewarming party what does that mean what you know what are the meanings that are there and as you begin to kind of deliberately tinker with those meanings the experience that flows from them changes as the experience that flows from them changes absolutely unequivocally biologically the responses because it seems far-fetched until you realize that your bodily tissues are responding to your experience and your experience by and large is under your control. I mean a lot of people don't exercise conscious control over it because no one taught you about it, no one even broach the subject or even suggest it was possible. Um, but we have this ability to kind of do perceptual modulation, experiential modulation, change how it is that we're feeling about this. and. You can't change how you're feeling. You can't change the quality of your experience without eliciting a change in the body. Because the body's not the body's not responding to what you're not experiencing. You know, the body's responding to what you are experiencing. And so anything that's there 
is surely a response to something that's going on in your experience. And as you change your experience, so the response changes too. Yeah, so we can look at this in the realm of unexplainable weight gain. So, you know, if your ankles are swollen, if you're just like, why have I gained a couple of pounds? You know, if your rings are tighter, you can kind of tell the difference with like water weight versus fat too. It's more jiggly um, because there's more water content in, in the fat. And so just paying attention to that. So that is one level that you could be aware of um, one of these conflicts going on. But the most most important thing about the kidney collecting tubule syndrome, we kind of call it the syndrome just as because it's so powerful for healthcare practitioners, for nurses, for doctors. One day medicine will know this is how the body works. And this is such a problem is, is this doesn't make any money. So, you know, what are you going to do with that? profound thing to be aware of if somebody is in the hospital, if somebody has a condition, if somebody has a diagnosis, because when you get a diagnosis of, let's diagnosis. say, a lung tumor, a breast tumor, you know, a colon tumor, so you've got this tumor in your body and you just found out about it and now you're freaking out and now you're like, oh my goodness, I, I have a tumor, what could that trigger in you? That could trigger, it could trigger a death fright conflict, which is a lung tumor, but it could also, for you, trigger an existence conflict. And if you start retaining water while you have a tumor that's in healing, you, the, you're, when the tumor is in healing, all healing happens in a fluid environment. And so there's fluid there anyways. There's fluid on the organ level and fluid on the brain level. And if you start retaining water when you are already in the healing process of another conflict, what appears to happen is it looks like the tumor is growing rapidly. It looks like, you know, you've got this a brain tumor that's growing rapidly. But what's happening is there's expansion of the area because there's just so much water. And people will be in a hospital situation and, you know, they're scared because they're in the hospital. They're having, you know, isolation conflicts, existence conflicts. And so their body is retaining lots and lots of water. And that's when things kind of tend to get out of hand when you're in maybe like a surgery situation or a person's about to have surgery or finding out about it. So you can see how because of the kidney collecting tubule syndrome, because we start to retain water, especially when you're afraid and you're panicked and you're away from your pack and you're isolated and you're afraid that you're going to die, fear and panic is the absolute worst thing for all all conditions of the body. So whatever it is that you have, and that's why the education about German New Medicine and what the body is doing is so, it, it just creates peace of mind because you're like, oh, there's an understandable reason for why this is happening at this point because I'm at this phase of healing, I'm in phase A, I'm in phase, this is my epileptoid crisis, or you know, I'm in conflict. It's just being aware of this whole entire process, knowing that if you get freaked out, that you your body will retain water and whatever area is healing is gonna swell up big time um, and so this is such a powerful thing to be aware of uh, just in your own life so if you're you know gaining weight if you're you know af afraid of being abandoned if you have any of those conflicts to be aware of that but to know if you're ever in a situation where you've got healing that's what's going on and that's what you should be aware of so I just wanted to share that uh, with you guys tonight I'm gonna do a full tutorial with like the the pictures and everything because it's a complex process and it's great to know about okay so this is what triggers I have actually watched this. I guarantee I won't remember to link it down below. So I'll go look this woman's name up and find it. Um, it just is the way it is. This and this is where these things are going on. Um, but I wanted to answer that question. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Let me know if you have any. All right. So that's, that's it on this. Now, this is not to say that people don't have fat on them. They do. You, you got fat on you. You know, if you're like really overweight. But. A lot of it tends to be water weight, and that's why you can lose it so quick. I remember there was times when I was really stressed, and I would gain like 20 pounds in like a week, and then it would be gone the next week. So I know that's extreme, but it has happened. And that is it. So anyway, that is my reaction to what I found. Is it true? Is it actually happening? I know, I know the doctor was kind of labeled as like a woo-woo doctor and everything like that, you know, so whatever. But I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to point some of this stuff out. What do you think about it? Leave it down in the comment section down below. If you get any questions, if you want me to make more videos about this, I don't really know what I could possibly make in another video about this. I think everything's kind of been said here. But anyways, uh, as usual, like, subscribe. Talk to you in the next video. If you think this video might help somebody out, share it. That helps the channel out quite a bit. And yeah, 
Talk to you in the next one.